Am I down or am I legit depressed? It's a question some people have been asking right now. And the answer makes a big impact on what you do to take care of yourself and help get yourself through it. So in this video, we're gonna dive in into what depression is, what depression is not, and help you answer that question for yourself. Let's dive in. So to get started with, let's define what depression is. It's a common term that a lot of people use, but it's often used incorrectly. It's often used in replacement as sad or going through a hard time. And so depression is a medical condition that is defined by a set of symptoms that are found in what's called the DSM or the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. It's the manual we use to determine is somebody legit depressed. Depression is a medical condition of the brain. So these symptoms are impact every part of the body because the brain controls all of the body. So to start with, one of the th symptoms is an impact on your sleep. So this can be, I'm sleeping way too much, I'm sleeping maybe 10 to 12 hours a day, maybe even more. A lot of people who are depressed maybe barely get out of bed during the day. Or this can be sleeping too little. I, it's hard for me to go to sleep. I wake up a lot in the middle of the night or I wake up too early and I can't go back to sleep at that point. So I'm not getting enough sleep. So either way, depression impacts sleep one way or the other. Then there's eating. Eating is similar to the sleep where you're either eating too much or eating too little. When you measure it on the basic three meals a day, either I'm eating a ton to kind of cope with eating and I'm eating a lot of sweets and I'm eating a lot of salts. I crave a lot of those when, I, when people are depressed or I'm barely eating at all. I've heard people say, I don't even notice that I'm hungry or my stomach or my body doesn't really even tell me I'm hungry. I have to eat because I know I should. And even then it's not enjoyable at all. So one of those two extremes is impacted as well. And then another symptom is excessive guilt. Now this can be, I feel guilty over every little thing uh, where, I may have misspoken, I may have made a mistake, and that just kind of haunts me and stays with me. And every time I think about it, I get a lurch in my stomach and it's hard for me to let that go. Or it can be there's one big thing in my life that I really feel guilt over and I cannot let myself go from that. Um, and it keeps haunting me. And this may be something that happened 10 years ago, you haven't thought of in 10 years, and now it's coming back and replaying in your mind. These next set of symptoms are kind of some of the heavier, harder symptoms that people go through. One is isolation. And isolation doesn't mean you're always alone. It means you feel alone. So someone who's isolating, this may be someone who goes in their room a lot, does physically separate themselves from others, does not enjoy the company of others like you did before. Um, but this also can be, I'm in the middle of a crowded room and I feel so alone, um, so unseen. So this can be a very physical manifestation or this can be a perceptional feeling of feeling alone. Um, another layer of this is feeling like a burden. Um, my presence, my existence is a burden on others. Uh, people have to take care of me or I'm always a mess up. And that kind of, that ties in with the guilt a little bit. Um, and notice some of these negative thoughts that can come from that of isolation, feeling far apart from others, feeling like a burden to others. It can really fuel a lot of negative dialogue that keeps someone down and can feel really, really heavy. And feeling alone and feeling very, very heavy, having a lot of negative dialogue, this can lead to someone thinking about not being here anymore, thinking of death and dying, suicidal thoughts. This is also a symptom of depression. This can look play out like self-harm, um, self-harming myself, um, either to punish myself or to cope with the emotional pain that I'm going through. Um, or this can be th thinking about not being here anymore, thinking about um, would anyone care if I weren't here anymore, thinking about what I might do to take my own life. Um, think Very scary, heavy thoughts like that. If you're having thoughts like that, reach out to someone right now. Stop this video, reach out to us, our, our number's down below. Reach out to a family member, reach out to a friend. Um, you can tell them that you're thinking about this or just talk to them. Share your life with them a little, laugh with them a little, meet them up somewhere. Don't be alone if you're having thoughts like that. Someone who's struggling with depression also may feel hopeless. Like they're, It's hard to see a positive future. It's hard to see a future at all that, that can contribute to the thoughts of death and dying. Uh, but it's like this weight, this nothing can get better. Depression can lie to you. It's not true. 
but that's what someone with depression believes is nothing can get better. This can't move forward. I can't move past this. That's the weight someone with depression carries. And again, this is medical. So this isn't someone who's lazy, who's making this up in their mind, who is, is something is flawed with them somehow. This is their brain literally not producing what it should to feel hope, to feel positivity, to feel productive, to have motivation. That's another symptom. You lose motivation to do anything. Things you used to really, really enjoy to motivation, productivity, to feel productive, to feel that good feeling after a long days of work, if I got something done, uh, that goes away. And that goes away because our brain isn't producing dopamine like it used to. Dopamine is produced anytime our body really kind of feels good. So this is something that's produced after a long run, after a really relaxing walk on the beach, um, even using the restroom and eating is affected by dopamine. So a dopamine, it gives us that ah, feeling. When our body stops producing that, we lose the good feeling with living. And so everything becomes hard. Everything becomes heavy. And then that's what leads to the what's the point. That can lead to the weight, the hopelessness feelings. So even your body starts to hurt a little more. Um, even moving can be painful. And that's why people stay in bed and just kind of want to hide from the world. This is what real medical depression is. And you notice I went through all those and I didn't even mention sadness once. Sadness is a part, can be a part of this, but it doesn't always have to be. So that's one of many of these symptoms. If you have five of these symptoms, you can be considered clinically depressed. One thing in my counseling practice that I distinguish between is this situational depression, sadness, or is this true medical depression? So here's the difference. If you lost someone very important to you that you loved dearly and you're feeling sad, you're feeling that weight, every day is hard, that could be very much because of your grief. That is a representation of grieving, not so much medical depression. If you're facing an extra big challenge, COVID-19, everyone's facing that right now, and life is a little bit harder, and there's a lot of indecision, and there's a lot of unknowns, we may be feeling the weight of that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're medically depressed. Medical depression is when your brain is not functioning the way it should. A part of your body, an organ in your body, isn't working at its optimal level and it's causing a set of symptoms which then is diagnosed as depression. So another way of thinking about this is someone with diabetes. With someone with diabetes, your pancreas isn't working the way it should and that's measured by inconsistent insulin levels, inconsistent um, sugar levels, and then the symptoms that result from that. It's a medical condition. We cannot tell our pancreas, hey, it's time for you to work now, or will your pancreas to do something different? Just like we can't will our brain to produce dopamine or do something different, produce more serotonin, um, giving us that natural drive, that natural motivation, or that natural calm that can come from it. With COVID-19 right now, what I'm seeing a lot of in my prep counseling practice and amongst other counselors I know is someone who may have had a touch of depression or a touch of anxiety, they could, they could manage, they could do basic coping skills, get through the day, I'm okay. With COVID-19 happening, I'm not okay anymore. I can't get through the day anymore. It's now too hard. It's, I've got the extra pressure of what's going on today and I had the medical pieces as well in the combination, I can't muscle through it anymore. I need that extra help and that's okay if that's you. But that means it's a combination of situational and medical coming together. And so if we can help you work through finding ways to manage the medical and help you with coping with the situational, it can help you get to the next step and help you work through this tough phase. So am I down or am I legit depressed? I went through the symptoms. You can do kind of a check off with yourself if any of those feel familiar or something like you're going through right now. But the big key indicator that I look for in my practice when I'm talking with someone, sitting with them for the first few times to really assess, are we dealing with medical depression or are we dealing with a situation, situational type depression or down is, let's say fishing is your favorite thing in the world. Let's say that's something you love to do after a long, hard week, you look forward to getting out on the lake. When you're depressed, the idea of going fishing feels like so much work. I can't even bring myself to get the tackle box together. The idea of driving there, the idea of sitting in the heat. When before 
just the idea of going fishing got you through some tough moments, maybe extra stress at work or a long work day. I'm going to the lake tomorrow. Ah, I can do this. But now it's like, that is a big key indicator for me. If this is something going on with the brain or this is just an extra hard time that I'm dealing with, with what, whether it's stress, whether it's a big change, whether it's a loss of a loved one, or it's an uncertainty with the future. For dealing with one of those things, I may be feeling the weight like I'm depressed, but my brain's still operating in its full capacity. I'm not medically depressed. So after you've kind of figured out for yourself, which one am I? Am I legit depressed or am I just going through a tough phase and I'm down right now? It impacts what you do next. It impacts how you decide to help yourself through it. If I'm medically depressed, you do need the support and care of either a counselor, a medical professional to help you through it. Just like someone with diabetes, they need to see a doctor. They need to talk about their diet. They need to talk about getting on the medications. They need insulin, measuring their levels. They need to stay on top of it. Now, this doesn't mean they can't live a full life. Tons of people with diabetes live with a full life, but they have to take care of themselves and they have to go through different steps and stages to make sure their body is working as it should. That same way with mental health, that same way with depression or anxiety. I take the medication that helps my brain work the way it should. Um, I, you know, with a diabetic eating right, I take care of myself in certain ways that help me get through the day or help me get through some tough symptoms. And that's the combination of seeing a medical professional and working with a counselor. Because even if you start medication and that really starts to help, if I've gotten a habit of a thinking pattern with a lot of guilt, that guilt thinking pattern isn't going away on its own with the extra, with the medicational help. So the counseling part is helping identify that's not a true thought or that's really excessive guilt. I, it's time for me to let go of that. Now this is how I do it. And feeling that validation and feeling that sense of, I can move past this. That's what the help of a therapist can do. If you're down or having a tough time, that can look a little different. Now, it doesn't mean you still couldn't benefit from the help of a counselor, especially if you're really down or really having a tough time with everything that's going on. A counselor still could help you with that walk. But if it's a lighter down, if, if only a few symptoms really spoke to you, then this is, can be something where you watch different YouTube videos on different ways of coping. Um, it can be journaling, can be really beneficial, using your faith practices, prayer, and the support from others. It can be adding some different things into a self-care routine. That can kind of bump you up from just being down. And that's something you can do on your own. In the description below, you'll find links and different resources that can help you in making your next steps and making a decision about what's best for you and moving forward. If you would like to see different topics on mental health, on parenting, on marriage, please leave me a comment below of something you would like me to expand on a little more. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I'm working hard on producing more resources for people when it comes to anxiety, depression, parenting, your marriage, uh, different aspects of just facing life. And so if you're wanting to see more of these videos, please push the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see my videos as they come out. Also, please share this with others because you never know who may be struggling in silence. You never know who this could help next. Thanks. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.